Peter Gay, what's up? And to add to that, Adrian, there are a lot of families who are still in need of assistance. And as we know, the Recovery Task Force from the government is doing its best to provide, to respond to those needs of both residents and businesses alike as swiftly as they can. And there's some repaving that has already begun in terms of the major road networks led by the Ministry of Communication and Works to get ahead of the repair works and to get some of the infrastructure fixed before you know more unpredictability happens as it pertains to the hurricane season. Yes, so. absolutely. And we have to say too as well, uh, we have to give, give big up to the, the emergency response teams and okay. the, uh, the public works department and all other services that really got the job done mm -hmm. in a hurry. So, I mean, there's a lot to do, but, you know, we didn't suffer uh, as much as we could have. Look at you know, Houston. And, and look at as is the case in Houston, I mean, there were several neighbors and friends who st stepped up to provide the necessary support to hose, assist in whatever way they could, their neighbors and other persons in their com community. And that must also be commended as well, Edwanko. Yes, indeed. So what's the big news? All right, so another big news which carries over from last week is the new governor, Augustus Jaspert, officially taking up his post now that the former governor, John Duncan, has left the territory. He has been in his post for about a week now, as you know, and he has been doing the rounds. Today, he held a meet and greet with members of the media so that we could get a feel of him, he could get a feel of us and the associated issues. A little rundown in terms of what he told us. He says that he and his family are so far loving it here in the BVI. He's here with his two sons and his wife and actually described the BVI as perhaps the most beautiful place he has ever visited. Um, he again spoke highly of uh, how quickly the territory uh, began its recovery efforts after the tropical wave and spoke quite pleasantly about being greeted this morning with the view of a cruise ship being docked at the pier park. Remember that two cruise calls were canceled earlier this month after the tropical wave. But today, uh, Disney Cruise Line returned to the territory and was docked at the pier park. And tomorrow, Norwegian uh, Cruise Line is expected to return as well. So that's good news for the territory because some persons were not so pleased that the calls were canceled. But the cruise ships are back and business should be back in the pockets and hands of those you know who are looking forward to it. The governor says he plans to, and he's already begun the rounds, but he plans to meet, you know, the various government officials and public officials to, as he put it, formulate a partnership for the benefit of the BVI. And he's already begun this last week, he said. He met with the police commissioner and his team at police HQ. And later this week, he's expecting to meet with members of the cabinet and he's also looking forward to getting out and about to familiarize himself with the territory in terms of the sister islands virgin Gorda this week and the others next week now remember that at his swearing-in ceremony the governor spoke about wanting to be approachable and to be engaged and he again expressed this today during his meeting with journalists describing himself as at this point being in basically a listening mode here he is for me the big issue and this is the main issue that, that i want to focus on is actually as i said at the beginning is about what's the big picture about taking taking uh, these fantastic islands as territory forward um, and doing that in partnership with you know, with the government, uh, with the elected government here and with public services um, here. Uh, there's lots of things that obviously, you know, as governor will come across my desk that um, I will, will be getting into, that I will be wanting to support uh, the policies and the things that, that the elected government uh, take forward. Um, but it, it, there's, at the moment, it's very much I'm on week one. You know, my, my job at the moment is to is to listen, uh, to engage, and um, to sort of work and build build a strong partnership going forward. 
All right, so the governor also says that his priority, his main priority will be good governance, accountability and impartiality and everyone in the territory, particularly residents and of course the media has a role to play in ensuring this. Yes, As I said, I'm going to take away the CI too. Welcome on my opening speech in, in swearing in. Uh, a key part of, of the governor's role is helping to support good accountability, uh, good governance, and that runs across every issue you could think in. So throw in any issue and everything, the test in my mind will be about actually is this in the best interest of, of, the, of the territory as a whole? Is there good, good accountability? Have there been good processes? Uh, is there strong governance around it? Is there the right level of transparency around it? So whilst I won't guess what, what issues you, you know, you, you, you've got in your head, those are the tests that are in my head for any issue that comes across my desk and that will, will be what I'll you know, go forward on. This is not just a role for the governor. Um, this is a role for, for everybody. It's a role for yourselves. You are part of good governance. A healthy democracy is, is all of what you do. Uh, it's also about the public, what, what they do, you know, and how they hold everybody to account, myself included. Um, uh, but it, it's also about uh, public services themselves and how public officials and public servants uh, themselves operate to the highest standards, are uh, efficient, are effective and are operating the best way. And that those in positions of power, whether that's me, whether that's elected officials, whether that's those who, who have certain responsibilities across, across the territory. Now, Edrenka, as you are well aware, there has been speculation and suspicions that there is a particular agenda when it comes to govern the governor's position in this territory, especially with you know the legacy that the previous governor has left be behind. Now, this governor was asked, does he have an agenda? Here is what he said. I, I don't come here with a set agenda to... to to, in the lines of that some of the people in the blogs have been saying. Uh, the only agenda I come here with is uh, an agenda about when I'm here and in the tenure that I am hugely privileged and honoured and proud to have been given by Her Majesty to be here. The only agenda I have is about making this place even better and taking this, this great territory uh, forward for the future. Now, in that, uh, that's one about partnership, it's one about working with people um, and uh, you know, if if there are things that over time there are areas that the people need to be held to account for, as I said earlier, I expect that the institutions to be holding them to account and the governor has a role to, to help those institutions hold people uh, to account. So there you have it, Edrenka, from the man who will hold the position of governor of the BVI for the next three years. Yeah, well, as I started to say, Peter Gay, I'm taking a wait and see attitude. Uh, I seem to me, and this is my perspective, that over the last, I think, um, four governors uh, from, uh, I think it's uh, Governor McClary, uh, but I think three or four governors uh, back, they seem to be getting more involved in the internal uh, politics and uh, economy and, and, and just more hands-on in the territory than our previous government. So it seems as though each one, from my perspective, each one comes with an agenda. And they carry the, the, they carry the agenda of the previous one forward. So there, there seems to me to be an overall strategy, an overall plan of the United Kingdom for the territory. And the governors are coming with their specific portion of that plan to go forward every four years. But I really see, I'll take a wait and see attitude. And I got some surprises from uh, Governor Duncan when it comes to uh, his views uh, uh, regarding uh, colonialism. Uh, that was quite interesting to me. I won't go into great detail now. But um, I, like I said, I'm taking a wait and see attitude. And this governor seems to be, again, with it, from his words, if read between the lines, um, wanting to be more involved in the internal um, governance and politics of the territory. So that's, that's going to be an interesting tenure, another interesting tenure for governors. And of course, we know we had uh, 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 quite a few uh, of the politicians absent. No, I know many of them from the swearing-in ceremony. From the swearing-in ceremony. And I know many of them were away. 
Uh, so it, it, you, you could speculate, but I can't say for sure whether it was a snub or it just they had um, previously planned vacations. But Especially in light of that fact prior to him coming where the, the House of Assembly speak about right. whether or not it's constitutional for him to be sworn in at the House um, of Assembly. Yes, that's right. So taking all those things into consideration, uh, it seems as though there's some tension that uh, has already been established uh, between the two working um, entities. And so, as I said, I have to. I have, we have to. I have to wait and see personally. Well, but, from but it seems like an interesting individual. Definitely so, uh, and seems quite savvy too. From you know what I've been able to garner, which hasn't been much so far. I mean, so far he says he wants to be approachable. He has come off approachable so far. The members of the media have been pressing him in terms of you know this issue of priorities. Are you going to be picking up where Governor Duncan left off? And he hasn't. He, He's been quite diplomatic in his responses to those questions. You know, basically all he would let loose is that he's been briefed by the governor and, you know, he will wait and see, you know, what comes across his desk and, you know, how things unfold. Regarding that issue of how he felt about uh, key, uh, especially senior cabinet members and legislators not being present at his swearing in ceremony, all he would say was that, well, he knows at this point, you know, he's, been on, he's only been here a short while and it's a point in time when a lot of people are off island. So he isn't thinking much of that and he basically is looking forward to, you know, getting, you know, to discuss some matters of importance with them over his tenure and to meet them sometime later this week. So he isn't letting loose much right. at this point. Thank you very much, uh, Peter Gay, for that interesting report.